welcome to the second level of mastering orthodontic biomechanics. I'm so glad you're here and I want to congratulate you on passing the first level where we cover how to avoid common mistakes in orthodontics. I'm working hard to deliver the best content possible on biomechanics for free. So knowing that you're here following the classes really makes me very happy. Thank you for that. But I need you to have watched the first class so you can absorb everything I'm going to teach you now. This event was created with a logical sequence of level just to make it easier for you to understand. So don't skip them. Before starting the content here, I need to remember to recall you that the purpose of this event is to open your mind in relation to biomechanics. For this, a very important point that we must understand is that we do not have the option of simply not wanting to use biomechanics in our treatments. To make it clear, I will bring here the concept of the word biomechanics itself. Biomechanics is the study of the mechanical laws relating to the movement or structure of living organisms. As simple as it, as it may seem, you need to understand the meaning of the words that makes it easier to understand the concept. Pay attention to what I'm going to say now. As simple as it may seem, Understanding the meaning of the word biomechanics makes it easier to understand the concept. Pay attention to what I'm going to say now. When we speak of mechanical laws, we are referring to directly the physical laws that underline the application of force to create motion. And that's exactly what we, we are doing when we are treating our patients. An object can only move when a force is applied to it. And this is no different when we talk about the movement of the teeth. I always get messages from fellow orthodontists saying that the treatment are not going as planned because the tooth didn't move or teeth to the place they wanted. So they are applying the right force, but problems are, are coming to the treatment. And in my experience, you can be sure that the reason for that is the lack of knowledge of biomechanics, how to apply biomechanics. When you master it, Every action that will be done on your patient can be more or less calculated with more assertiveness. In the way, the risk of any movement not going as planned decreases dramatically. On the other hand, without the knowledge of biomechanics, it is impossible to accurately predict the result of a force applied during the execution of a treatment. On the other hand, without the knowledge of biomechanics, it is impossible to accurately predict the result of a force applied during the execution of the treatment. That's why unforeseen and problems occur that stop your treatment in the middle of the process. With that said, I reiterate, you have no choice but to apply biomechanics. Even though you don't know how to use it correctly, it's present in every case that appears in your clinic. A few months ago, I did a survey asking What's the biggest difficulty that orthodontists have to learn biomechanics? The answers were, biomechanics is very complicated. I don't have time to learn it. And that's why I don't apply it in my practice. It means you're not applying the correct concept to treat your patients. But the truth is that you apply biomechanics to your patients every day without even knowing that. This is because it's simply impossible to ignore the laws of physics. So there are only two ways. Either you apply biomechanics in the right way, or you run the risk of ruining your patient's treatment. There's no other way. Just like I did at the beginning, you also need to roll up your sleeves and dedicate yourself to study biomechanics and master it so you can have more success in your treatments. Remember, our patients trust us, their health. So we need to understand and continuously learn more about biomechanics. Well, with that said, I'd like to open your eyes to the importance of biomechanics, and I'm sure you're going to apply that in your daily practice to your patients. So now I'm going to start one point that for me is very important, the understanding of torques, the understanding of managing the space closure in orthodontics. This is the talk that I chose for this class now. Let's move on. So one of the concepts that I want you to understand is the relative and real torques that we apply in our, our mechanics. We have different ways of understanding the torque. The real torque itself is the torsion that we apply to the, to the, uh, to the uh, wire. So we can have a better relationship between the wire and the slot. So for example here, let me show to you. 
If I don't understand the way I'm applying it, I just can do simply do this. I'm putting a rectangular arch wire inside a slot, a rectangular slot, and this will generate, in this case, in this example here, this is generating a negative torque. So this torque is probably, if the, 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 those anterior teeth are extremely proclined, this torque is a negative torque with a positive inclination of the root and negative inclination of the crown. Because we just have there, in that situation, a couple. And after doing that, we are just upriding the anterior teeth, and then we are now in the position of having to control the retraction the whole way. So this may be very difficult in some situations. And now I'm going to show to you how to understand better the relationship between the real torque and the relative torque. The real torque, as I told you before, is the torsion itself. Neutral torque is the no torsion, like we just grab one arch wire from our stock. And there is the way, this is the way we see no torsion in the anterior and posterior segment. Here, we're considering it to be part of the arch, segmented cut in the middle, and we see that we have no torsion in this portion here. This is the in between the central incisors, for you to understand. This is the middle of the anterior segment of the arch cut in this position. No torsion, meaning neutral torque. And we refer neutral torque to the torque that is applied to the wire. We don't refer that as passive because passive means when we don't have rela active relation between the wire and the slot. This is passive. But for being passive, it doesn't mean that it's neutral. Okay, sometimes we have to put active, meaning we need to put a positive or negative real torque to achieve the relative passive torque because the inclination of those anterior teeth this is a good example, the anterior upper teeth, that we are really, really uh, in need of understanding it because it can change a lot of the profile. It can change a lot of the exposure during the smile of the upper incisors and the negative inclination of those anterior teeth may jeopardize the treatment and also the periodontal status of anterior teeth. So we need to understand that. In, uh, in this case, going back, we sometimes apply a real torque, a negative real torque, positive or negative, to achieve the, uh, to match the inclination of the slot and the inclination of the, uh, the wire. That's why it is important. Neutral torque doesn't mean, just for a start here, doesn't mean that we are going to apply relative passive torque. You see this in a few moments. So this is neutral. The way we see this is both is either using uh, the position of the wire in relation to the uh, glass slab, or we can grab the anterior segment of the wire here with a rectangular or tweed pliers to grab and see the position in which the posterior part of the arch is passing in relation to the center of the pliers. So in this case here, as we can see, this is a completely neutral torque, horizontal. Sometimes we have a negative torque, we can apply this torque. This is part of our understanding now, just how to see the torque, not to apply it. We're going to have it more thoroughly in other classes. There is an angle in this case between the glass slab and the base of the wire. So again, this is the, rect the rectangular wire cut in the middle, in the midline, so we can see this inclination here or angulation as you want to call it inclination because we call the, the third law the, the third key the inclination the torque so that that's why sometimes as uh, i would just prefer to refer as inclination not angulation not to mix with the second key which is the angulation mesial distal angulation of the crown so this is one positive or negative real torque depending on which arc, arch we are inserting this rectangular arch wire. If I'm inserting it in the upper arch wire because of the tendency of changing the inclination of well-positioned anterior teeth going with the crown book palatal and the root buckle, we call it this torque here, a positive root torque or negative crown torque to the upper up, uh, wire, uh, upper arch, I'm sorry, and it's quite the opposite when we refer to the lower arch. So, for example here, 
This is a negative torque to the upper arch because if we have well-positioned anterior teeth, when we insert with this torsion here, which we call, let me show to you, negative crown torque, when we insert this inside this slot, the tendency is of having a palatal inclination, a palatal inclination of anterior crowns. So this is what's going to happen. But what if I insert the same way, not twisting it, not putting it upside down, the same way I insert upper, I'll do the same way here in the lower arch. We'll have quite the opposite relationship. Now we have a positive crown torque and negative root torque, meaning we now have a different outcome using the same arch inserted in the same way, upper and lower. Of course, I can't invert, I can't put it upside down and I'll have the same effect, upper and lower. But in this case, in this example, so you understand how complex it is, we don't just think about that as a cake recipe, put this way, that way, we need to think. It's better this way. Thinking, understanding is the better way to do this, okay? So let's move on. And now I have the opposite, what we call a positive real torque to the upper arch, and it's a negative real crown torque in the lower arch. Let's see it again. Let's uh, be sure if this is true or not. So here we have the torsion that is resembled here. So we have the torsion in the anterior segment, and I'm inserting now an upper arch, anterior segment of the upper arch, and now we see that we have a tendency because it's going to be generated a couple inside the slot. We have the tendency of going buckle with the inclination of the crowd. okay? So this is what's going on. That's why we call it a real positive torque to the upper arch. And if I do that in the lower arch without changing the position of the arch and I go insert inside the slot this real torque, we call it negative because the tennis, because of the tendency of going but lingual with the with the crown. I'm sorry, lingual with the crown. So now we are just seeing how things are going uh, when we do the torsion. And here is how we do this torsion. I'm not going to be thorough about it now because we'll have the opportunity of two pliers. I just remove the torque with two pliers and I'm gonna show to you that what I see very frequently in the internet for achieving the anterior torque with two pliers is completely wrong. We are not really giving a torsion in that segment. And I'm gonna show it to you in another class, not now. But as you can see here, we are just assessing the anterior and posterior torques so we can understand what we are doing, okay? So let's move on. And now we have, uh, this, this is a very good example of how the torques are very, are, are different and how the torques may be different, may have different outcomes depending on the inclination of those teeth in which we are inserting the real torque. Let me, uh, let me uh, explain that with more details in the next slide. So this is the torque, the relative torque now is the torque that is expressed in the Brecht slot and consequently in the teeth. In other words, what the twist of the wire will represent in terms of inclination tendency in this and this is what's, what's more important for us, the understanding of the relative torque. Why is that? Because it will change or keep the inclination of those teeth in which we insert that rectangular wire. So we are going to, in this class here, we are going to uh, have those concepts of passive torque, active torque, not in case of being active, neg negative or lingual, or palatal in the upper arch or positive or buccal torque, okay? So we are ne need now to understand how to measure it. It's very important. The way to check the relative torque is to insert the rectangular wire inside the slot of the tooth or group of teeth that one wants to check and assess in which position the wire tip will pass in relation to the molar tubes because this is the position in which we are going to insert the wire. So if we have those three 
uh, different positions, we're going to have three different outcomes in relation to the position of those anterior teeth, the incisors, okay? So let's move on. And now we are seeing a passive relationship, meaning when I insert, I'm not putting inside this lock. I'm just seeing the position of the wire teeth, the, the wire end here, in relation to the slot of the tube and the posterior teeth, okay? And the posterior brackets. So let's understand that uh, when we change the inclination of anterior teeth, what's going to happen? Not changing now, I'm not changing the torsion in the anterior segment. It's the same neutral torque here. No torsion, but now I changed the inclination of anterior teeth so you can see that we now have a real, I'm sorry, a, uh, an active relationship between the wire and the slot. Let's see. So now, as you can see, the tip of the wire is passing below the, the level of the tube. Meaning, what is going to happen now is a, an active torque in the anterior segment because it's going to be generated here a couple. So let's check it. So when we do this to go up, we are now generating an active relationship because of the couple that is created inside the slot. So now the real torque, neutral, is in this case is um, a, crown, a negative crown torque, a relative negative crown torque. So you see, first, first example, neutral remained passive because the inclination was correct and the relationship between the angulation or inclination or torsion of the wire matched the inclination of the slot. So no active relationship was generated in that situation. Now we have an active relationship. Okay, and again, changing now the inclination for a more negative inclination of the crown because we have negative inclination of the slot also. Of course, it depends on the prescription. It depends on the, uh, the size of the, 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 the slot, the gauge of the wire and many things. Uh, but, but let's, in this case, be very um, general. In general, when we have a negative inclination of anterior teeth and we put, we insert a thick arch wire, we are going to generate an active and negative torque. And that's what I'm trying to show it here now. Uh, so in this case, as you can see, in opposition to what happened before, we have the higher position of the tip of the wire in relation to the slot. Meaning now we have active relationship because it's not passive as in the first example. And now this active relationship of the torsion of the wire, which is zero neutral in relation to the inclination of the anterior teeth, the anterior brackets. Now we have this relative crown torque, which is positive. So as you can see with just one example of a real torque, we may have three different relative torques. What means that everything is related to the relationship between the rectangular arch wire and the inclination that this rectangular arch wire will find of the slots when it's going to be inserted inside them, okay? This is the most important thing. We don't, we can't take it for granted that we put a rectangular arch wire from our stock and everything is going to be correct. It will not. Believe me, it will not. You need to understand that. And you owe that to your patient because if you do some mistakes in this part of the treatment, I'm going to show to you that we may have some very bad outcomes. Some very bad outcomes. As I showed you before, actually. I may go now again to that same uh, presentation that I showed you before. Just a second. So now we went back to this presentation that I showed you before, and we are going to go slow here, step by step, so you can understand this relationship, how important it is. So let's say that we are applying the fourth, that we're applying this uh, real torque neutral in this condition, and applying this, we are going to generate an active torque. This active torque in this situation is going to generate an inclination of the crown that goes with the crown palatal and with the root is going buccal. 
This is important because we have just one moment being applied here. We just have the moment of the couple. In this condition, what's going to happen is something like this. Let's say we have a very, very big inclination of the anterior teeth, and we are doing this. And we are doing a very bad thing to our patient. We are going to uh, have more delay, delayed treatment. We are going to generate a very bad outcome to the periodontal status, especially here that you're going to see now. We are going to throw this root buccally. Sometimes you don't even have more than one millimeter of space between the root and the cortical plate. Sometimes it's just very, very close. And when we do this, this is probably what's going to happen. We're going to generate this buccal crown torque, I'm sorry, buccal root torque and palatal crown torque. One thing here that I'm not going to tackle now because it's, it depends on more explanation, uh, a further explanation, is that sometimes we think, well, a couple, it will generate a moment that is a free, the moment of the couple is a free vector, meaning every time we apply it, the center of rotation is going to be the center of resistance. It won't happen in a fully engaged arch wire with thick, thick uh, width. So it's not going to happen. Why is not, what, not, not going to happen? Because the wire, it will prevent vertical movements and the contact point will prevent this position of the crowd. So for having this, for being the center of resistance, the center of rotation, the center of resistance itself, the crowds need to go palatal and it also needs to go downwards so we can have the pendulum being centered in the uh, center of rotation, which is going to be the center of resistance. So it's impossible. We have a fully engaged arch wire, meaning we have the thick arch wire engaged in central, lateral, canine, premolar, premolar, and molar. So it will prevent vertical displacement of the crown and will prevent uh, distal displacement of the crown. So it's different. It's worse. <laughs> it's worse. It's going to generate uh, and a worse outcome. As you can see here, the crown is going buccal, palatal, and the roots going buccal. And we have a second problem here, which is now we upright the anterior teeth and we need to go uh, distal to retract now because the, the, the crown is well positioned in relation to its inclination. We need to go with this crown distal without losing further inclination. Do you know the mechanics to do that? If we have like this, a large, a large uh, space to be covered, distalization to be done, it's very difficult. We need to apply a torque for that and we need to go step by step, controlling and controlling. It's more likely to happen something like this because now we have less attachment, we have more inclination taking place and it's quite, quite difficult to do to control this movement. So this is something, again, that you need to understand because it's going to be delivered to the treatment. And your patient, it, uh, they will rely on you to do the best treatment for them, okay? And you may say now, well, that's why I do aligners. It's worse <laughs> when you don't understand the treatment plan that we are doing for aligners, we may be doing a worse job. A worse problem is going to be generated. Why you see many cases of class two being retract, retracted with contact in the anterior segment and open biting posterior? Because you're losing inclination. Because you're not planning the correct way. The way to do this is not doing the correction of the inclination, and the class two at the same time. It is not. If you do that, you are inserting two moments in the same direction. But okay, I'm not doing this now for you because it's very difficult. I know that. Let's move on. Let's go back to our presentation. Just a second. So as you can see, we have one real torque, main, uh, one real torque represented three different torques. So this is what we are going to have. If we don't understand this relationship, this important relationship. And now I'd like to ask one question. Will a positive real torque always be a positive relative crown torque? 
at this point, I'll give you just some moments so you can think about it. Yes, because I'm going to tell you a story about this, a very interesting story about this. That I was in one class and uh, my course in, uh, where I teach, and I'm the coordinator of this specialization course. And one of my students came to me saying, Kleber, I did a very good job. Look at this, proud of himself and with a very beautiful real talk, positive real talk. And he told me, Yes, what do you think? Isn't it a beautiful, beautiful, real positive talk? I, tell, I told him, yes, it's very beautiful. And he asked me, what do you think? Can I put it inside this lock? Because I'm trying to put that and it's not going very uh, smooth. It, I need to force so it can go inside this lock. And it called my attention because, of course, if we have a passive torque, you won't have a problem to insert it inside this lock. And I told him, you know that I always say that to you, James. Uh, his name is Jameson. Uh, we just need to apply this in a real concept. This is a real torque, but real life is the relationship of this torque that you're applying with the position of those anterior teeth. And of course, I, uh, for what you say, I understand that it's not passive because otherwise it should be easier for you to insert inside the slot and it's not be, being easy. So let's see the case. And when I went to the, uh, the chair to see the case, anterior teeth of that patient was, the anterior teeth, they were extremely flared, extremely buckling inclined. And of course, what was happening was that the real torque, positive torque that he, applied to anterior segment wasn't representing in that case a passive relative torque meaning there was something wrong and that's why i'm doing this question for you now giving this question now will a positive real torque always be a positive relative ground torque and now because of the history i'm telling you now the story i'm telling you now the story i'm telling you now you see that it's not the case sometimes we may apply a real positive torque, and this torque is going to represent sometimes passive. Let's do it again. Question. Will a positive real torque always be a positive relative ground torque? In this case, of course it is. We have now the horizontal position of the slot and distortion of the real torque, distortion of the wire, the twisting of the wire it makes a different inclination in relation to the inclination of the slot, which is zero, which is completely parallel to the horizontal line, let's say. And if we compare those two inclinations, this is positive, this is completely passive, meaning it's completely horizontal. So in this case, the real positive torque will act in, as a, a relative positive torque. Okay, but in this case, now you see that the inclination of the anterior segment of the wire is matching the inclination of the slot because the inclination of the slot is resembling, is, um, is the same inclination of anterior teeth that in this case are more proclined. So we can see that we have now a passive relationship, meaning we have one condition before, which was a real positive torque doing a, re, a relative po positive torque. Now, a real positive torque is being expressed, meaning a relative torque being passive. So, as you can see, again, it's all about the relationship of the inclination or torsion of the wire and the inclination of anterior T. So let's move on. And uh, now we have completely passive. If you wanted to change the inclination of anterior teeth, it won't happen because it's not an active situation. Again, let's move on. And let's say, is it possible that a real torque, a real positive torque have a negative relative torque effect very interesting question because it may seem a little bit controversial. It may seem a little bit off. Why? How can I apply a real torque, 
proud of my torque. And now I'm not having what I want. It's quite the opposite. I'm having the negative crowd torque. How is it possible? Again, it's all about the inclination of the crown. So if you have this inclination, this very, very proclining to your teeth, even applying a positive real torque, this positive real torque now is going to act in this relationship as a negative relative crown torque. Okay, that's it. Why? Because the inclination of anterior segment, the inclination of anterior crowns, they are very, very uh, proclined. They are, we have a very, very big inclination here, meaning the inclination of the torsion that you gave is not enough to match in anymore the inclination of the crown. The inclination is more positive and the inclination of your torque, the real torque, is more negative in comparison. It's still positive, of, of course. But let's say, uh, let's, let's give the numbers as an example. Let's say we have distortion of uh, 15 degrees. Uh, it's a positive real torque, 15 degrees, but the inclination of the crowns are around 40 degrees. So when we insert, Let's be absolute here, not, not uh, taking into consideration that the play inside the slot, not taking into consideration the, the side, nothing. Let's just be absolute. Let's say completely fitting, uh, filling the, the gap, filling the slot. When I put inside the slot the wire, the wire, it will go to be filling the slot. So in this condition, 15 degrees of inclination of a real torque, is going to be our standard. Let's say the, 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 those anterior teeth are going to go to this inclination. So they are 40 degrees inclined, but inclination of the stiff arch wire is just 15. So it goes from 40 to 15, meaning the torque that you are applying here is really negative on the ground and positive to the roots. So now we see that there, that's a true statement. A positive real torque may have a negative relative torque effect. So do you see the problem? When we do, we do not understand this, we do not pay enough attention to what we are doing when we insert a rectangular arch wire inside this lock. So if you don't understand this, you are going to see many, many cases with difficult, difficult, very difficult outcomes. So you can overcome them. It's very, very difficult when we uh, apply this, when we do this, this kind of mistake and the following steps of treatment of the orthodontic treatment are, boy, are going to be completely compromised. So pay attention. Please understand that. It's not that simple that we, so some people try to convince us. Not that simple. I've been seeing many, many situations with root resorption, the, the high sense in anterior segment and loosening inclination. I'm going to show to you some situations like that. And we just don't, we can't go on that way. We need to stop everything. And now we need to uh, correct that mistake that we generated. So can you see that? Are you following me here? It's very, very unfair to do that with your patient. You need to understand biomechanics because your patient, it relies on us as doctors, as, as orthodontists. So they give us this credit so we can do the best for them. It's important for you to understand all the concepts regarding what you're doing. Biomechanics is not something that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start a little bit of studying biomechanics because maybe I can help some cases of my patients, and I can overcome some situations that I'm stuck. It's not just that. You need to, the, to do the whole package. We need to understand everything, okay? So that's what I'm saying. See here? So even applying this positive torque, the real torque positive, we are going to have now a relative negative crown torque because we didn't see that we had this 
a mismatch between the uh, inclination of the crown and the inclination of the torque, the real torque that I gave before, that I uh, applied before, okay? So let's see an example of that, which is very common in my, uh, in my practice because I work with some colleagues that treat periodontal, periodontally compromised patients. And this is something that it's very, very common in my practice. We see cases like this, in which we have a periodontal losses, bone losses, and a huge inclination of anterior teeth because of the side effects that we know that we're going to happen. We see that a lot, this flare anterior teeth with huge inclination and diastemus and everything, and we need to do something for that. Some patients and some uh, colleagues uh, ask, uh, ask me, is it possible to treat periodontally, periodontally compromised patients if they have periodontal health at this point? Yes, it is. And I say more than that, it's mandatory. Otherwise, they're going to lose some teeth because this is a very vicious cycle in which anterior teeth are going to be more and more proclined because of the contact and being more proclined, they lose more and more bone attachment and losing more bone attachment, they will be going further. They're going, going to increase the inclination more and more. So we need to break this cycle. And how do we do that? We do orthodontically. First of all, the first thing we need to do is to secure enough space in the anterior segment so we don't have contact between upper and lower teeth in the anterior segment. And for that, I advise you to start always with this. The bite ramps in posterior segment, and this is not completely accurate. This is not just in one or two teeth. We need to spread this between all those teeth uh, the maximum of teeth that we can, so we can uh, divide the contact between those posterior teeth. And now, yes, we can go on with running the sequence of arch wires. And now we reach the, the rectangular arch wire. So if we don't understand that, and we just grab a arch wire from the stock and try to insert inside this crown, disaster. Disaster, what's going on here? is we have, have been speaking about it. So we now are going to create a couple inside this lot. And this couple is going to uh, change the inclination of those teeth. If we have space, yes, the root can go forward. But if we don't, the root, uh, I'm sorry, if we have a space, the crowns may go forward because they are going to... Uh, to be, they're going to be uh, distalized in some way, but especially we may have, and this is very bad, the buccal inclination of the, the roots that is very, very difficult for us to, uh, to control. And in addition to losing bone attachment, now we are compromising the rest of the treatment because now we need to control the overjet during the retraction in a very, very bad environment because the moment of the couple that are going to be, or that's going to be generated during retraction is much higher. Why is that? Because the center of resistance is now higher. And we know that the magnitude of the, the moment is calculated when we do the multipli multiplication between the, uh, the, the, the distance of the line of action of the force from the center of resistance and the force, the magnitude of the force itself. So if we apply a low force, okay, but sometimes you can't go with a low force because of the friction and everything. So in this, this sense, when we apply the force, we have more inclination, distal inclination of the crowns of upper teeth. Can you see the problem here? So the problem is huge. The problem is huge. So let's move on. In this case, what I'm saying here is we are applying a real torque, real positive torque, and now we have a passive, passive relative torque, which is good because now is the moment to correct the position of the crowd because now we have one force, one moment of the force, and one moment of the couple that may be applied in the opposite sense which is very, very important. So everything comes to the moment to force ratio. The moment of the couple 
and the force and the moment of the force of the stabilization. So this is what is very, very important for us to control. Let's see how it goes. Okay, here we have a passive. See, see here. So this is what we do when we do the torsion and the torsion of the wire matches the inclination of the slab. Now we have a passive relationship, which is very good. And what we are searching for, we're looking for. So now we have the destabilization. And yes, this is the proper time to do the correction of the inclination of anterior teeth. Again, why is that? Because we, at some point of this destabilization, we are generating a couple, and this couple is capable of controlling the moment, the moments of the force. So each time when the force goes distalizing into your crown, the moment of the couple is going to increase. And with an infinite cycles of distalization and correction, distalization and correction, distalization and correction, we are uh, putting the center of rotation close. It's not <laughs> it's not that true, but okay, let's say, because and the sake of uh, making things easier for understanding, we are putting the center of rotation close to the apex of anterior teeth. Yes, it's not correct. It's not accurate. This is not what's going to happen, but this is what we learn in books and everything. It won't apply to a fully engaged arch wire. I'm going to show to you uh, in a few slides ahead. So let's see the case here. So again, running the sequence and you don't need to run, you don't need to speed up things here because we are dealing with a periodontal compromised environment. So less force is desirable. Okay, so we go on and on. And when we reach the rectangular arch wire, we need to put that torque that we've seen before, a positive torque, both upper and lower. And we go on with the retraction, controlling and controlling and controlling. Remember, Although we need to understand the force, the system, the force system and the forces and apply everything, we need to do the adjustments appointment by appointment. Sometimes we're losing too fast inclination, then we increase the torque. Sometimes the torque is good, but sometimes we're stuck in our movement because of the friction and everything. So let's be very clinical here. We need to do that step by step, doing the adjustments in accordance to what we need to do, okay? So let's move on, doing the distalization. As you can see here, we are at the end of the treatment, and this is one other detail of the mechanics that sometimes we apply, especially when we have this triangular space, these black triangles that are generated because the increase of the distance between the contact point and the bone crest. So when we have this increase in this position because of the bone loss, we are generating that black triangle. So one way to deal with this in periodontal compromised patients is doing IPR because we go with the contact point more apical, meaning we are decreasing the distance between the point, the contact point, and the bone crest. We can do that sometimes, okay? Sometimes we can't, but let's say we can. We are also providing more stability because now we don't have just a contact point. We have a contact area, which is good for those cases, okay? So we have it here. And as you can see, this is the concept we applied in this situation. The retainer and the retention here is for life. So we need to go uh, with the retention indefinitely because this is not stable. Less bone attachment is less stability, okay? So we see here things before and after and the case of the case before and after. So this is important as you can see. And this is another uh, situation just to show to you the importance of knowing that. So where do we want to apply? Where do we want to place our center of rotation? And as I told you before, it's not completely accurate to say that we do in the retraction in a controllable way, meaning I'm doing what we call uh, control tipping. It's not completely accurate to say that the center of rotation is going to be placed in the apex of a teeth. Why not? 
because of this. Let's move on. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to, to explain that a little bit more in an article that I'm just finishing now. But it may be very simple for you to understand when you use this, this uh, drawings here. Look at this. I'm doing the digitalization of the GUT. If I'm using a thick arch wire for that, for example, I'm using a round arch wire, and uh, I know that round arch wire is very bad for doing the retraction, but I know that people do that using a curve, a, a, an accentuated curve, but you're not controlling the inclination. Okay? You are controlling the roller coaster effect, but not the inclination because you're not generating a moment. That's it. Uh, the, the resultant force is still one line of action, just that. But let's move on. As you can see, if I'm applying this concept here, I may think that I'm doing a distalization of a geo segment without increasing the uh, overbite, meaning because of the thickness of the arch wire and the stiffness of this arch wire, I'm doing the retraction this way. So as you can see, it's quite impossible to have here this uh, center of rotation being positioned, being in, in control tipping, be, being positioned uh, close to the center of resistance, apical to it. Why is that? Because we don't have a body, in this case, this tooth, because I'm just explaining, showing this incisor or this teeth if you want, we're not having, we're not having a freedom to go down with the root, with the crown, and go distal with the crown the way we want. So because of this restriction, we are not applying a pendulum with the center of the pendulum in the center of rotation inside the root. It's different. So now we calculate this. We know how to calculate this. We take two points, uh, given points of the root or some place, but the same given points, and we do uh, this uh, evaluation to understand what is the center of rotation of this movement, and this is the one that we see. Let's see if it's true. Let's take the pendulum, and now we see. Uh, so this anterior part is connected to the, uh, the, the, the brackets connect to the pendulum, and as you can see, we have a rotation with the center of rotation being this blue dot here. Okay, so in this case, we are having intrusion, we are having lingual inclination or palatal inclination on the crown, buccal inclination on the root, and we have the tendency of throwing the root outside the bone. That's simple and plain, okay? And it's going to happen. Or we can do this. We can apply a rectangular arch wire with a passive, um, with a passive uh, relative torque, and I like to use 1925 for that, not 17. I lose a lot of inclination when I use 17 because of the lack of stiffness of this kind of arch. And I usually use 19. And if I'm using uh, sliding mechanics, meaning I did the extraction, I had to slide the, the wire uh, in, uh, inside the, the slots of posterior teeth, I need to grind that posterior part of the arch and polish it so we have less friction and we have more stiffness on the segment. And you may be thinking at this point, ah, I've heard about a technique that they use that by the nation technique, yes, but they use 1725 in the anterior segment. And I've been, I've been seeing many of those cases very, very with a large inc uh, inclination uh, of anterior teeth palatal inclination of the crown because of the lack of stiffness of this arch. That's my opinion, just opinion, okay? So that's why I use 1925 in 22 slot. And here we have a different outcome. Again, look at here, the stiffness of the arch wire. Here we have it. It won't place the, the center of rotation in the apex. It's impossible. It's impossible to have that. I'm going to show you in other videos that I'm uh, I don't have it here now, but in other classes. And I'm going to show to you that for that to happen, we need to have the increasing of the overbite because of the pendulum, okay? Being the apex, the center of rotation. So this is different. But yes, it's more epical, the center of rotation here compared to the uh, other kind of center of rotation. So this is what we want. This is what we want. As you can see here, 
we have this pendulum in this position. This is the center of rotation of this kind of movement. Okay, this kind of movement, meaning stiff arch wire going distal with the crown without increasing the overbite with correct torque. This is the expected center of rotation. So when we compare, compare this to center of rotation, of course, you see that the number two will make it possible to preserve the root buckle, to preserve the bolt buckle to the root. So this is what we do. If we don't understand that we are doing some, something like this. This is from one uh, good friend of mine, Dr. Laurindo Fokin from the Dental Press. He is the publisher of Dental Press. Uh, this is the, the best, I should say, the best uh, journal that we have in Brazil and one of the 10 uh, in the world, among the 10 best journals in the world, clinical journals in the world. And we see here that this is Dr. Laurindo. I thank him for this example he gave me because he had the opportunity to see the previous records of this patient with good inclination of anterior teeth. I don't say good because it's, it's a little bit flare, but okay. I would go with very, very controlled torque in this case to go backwards. And you are going to see that what was done here was a disaster. Look at this. Now we have the inclination of anterior teeth being lost, although the posterior, all, uh, uh, with the posterior teeth lost, the inclination of posterior teeth. And as you can see here, this is what I was telling you before. If we don't have, this is worse, if we don't have a stiff arch wire, we have another bad outcome, which is the inclination being lost with the center of rotation close to the center of resistance apical to it because we are also increasing increasing the overbite. So we have many bad things here. Do you consider that something fair to your patient? So not knowing the right way, it's not fair. It's not fair to your patient. Look at those roots. Look at those roots. They are completely outside the bone. Can you see it here? they are completely outside the bone. Look at before and after retraction. Again, before and after retraction. So as you can see, this is something very bad that we need by all means to avoid. How do we do that? Understanding biomechanics, pure and simple, okay? So since we have many, we have many things to cover when you say, when you talk about tor torques and and everything. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have, we don't have time now to do everything. We don't have time to talk about everything. So this is what I wanted to call your attention about because it's very common to treat those cases in our practice. Those are class two cases. Same thing with class three, but we have more problem when we do the retraction of lower anterior teeth in class three cases because we don't have no room to do that in most of the cases, especially because they are most of those Three, uh, class three cases with a prognatic mandible, mandible, they are hyperdivergent, meaning they have a very thin synthesis. So how can we do that? We need to apply the best concepts that we have, although we have very, very bad results in our treatment. Okay? So let's say goodbye, but before saying goodbye, I'd like to show you one case just one case, so you can see what we are going to see in our next class. Here we have a case that I treated using a strategy for that, that I use that I used a lot. In this case, you may think, oh, this is a surgical case, but it is not. This is a, it's not a surgical case. Can you, can you imagine the way I did this treatment? Well, I'm gonna show to you in the next, in the next class, this is very, very interesting biomechanics. And then we are going to use many other concepts of biomechanics that we need to understand. And we are going to discuss what is the best patient to do this kind of treatment. Because I've been seeing a lot of cases being treated with the same strategy, but it's not indicated for that case because those cases are hyperdivergent 
with larger mandibles and we are actually changing, exchanging problems. We have class three, we have the inclination or we have the rotation of the mandible down and backwards. And when we do that, in this situation, we go with the mandible forward and upwards, which is going to uh, create a, convo a concave uh, profile sometimes, okay? So this is important. So guys, these were some of the improvement techniques I needed to teach you. Of course, there are lots of things that I haven't been able to detail because our time here is limited. So I ended up getting into this subject much more deeply with my training program for the orthodontist. This is something that I do, I like to do. But anyway, I hope that this class really opened your mind to biomechanics. If all this made sense to you, take a screenshot of this screen now and tag me so I know you've completed the second level of the Mastering Orthodontic Biomechanics event. I will make available these slides using this class so that you can download and use them as supplementary study. So to study, this is something that you can do in your home. Remember that next Friday we'll have our other class of this event in which I will literally break down the step-by-step -step of some treatments that I did myself and that generated this type of transformation. The transformation that I showed you before, that patient. And not, you know that in this case, I didn't do, sur didn't do surgery. But anyway, I hope that this class really opened your mind to biomechanics. If all this makes sense for you, please take a screenshot of this screen now and tag me so I know you've completed the second level of mastering orthodontic biomechanics. I'll make uh, available the slides that I use in this class so that you can download and use them as supplementary study material. Remember that next Friday, we'll have another class. And in this class, I will literally break down the step-by-step -step of some treatments that I did myself that generated very, very beautiful outcomes like that I showed you before. And in that case, as you saw, I didn't do surgery. So I'm gonna show to you how I did that, that kind of treatment, okay? So write it down on your schedule. This class will be released on August 19th at 8 a.m. UTC. So see you there. Bye-bye.